Thank you very much, Stephanie, and uh, thank you very much, Ben, and thank you to, for putting together such a, a wonderful uh, group of speakers and artists. Um, I'm very grateful and honored to be part of this today. I'm going to read a testimony um, from my father, and I hope you'll bear with me as I, as I read through it. I was nine years old when my world changed. I was born in 1939 in Nazareth, Palestine, the sixth of nine children, and grew up in a small town nearby called Limjeri. I have fond memories of my childhood, of playing with my cousins who lived in the neighborhood, and the smell of fresh almonds, lemons, and of rain. But in April 1948, everything changed. My father was returning from Haifa when the car he was in was stopped by members of a Zionist militia who tied up, blindfolded, and abducted him along with the other passengers. We had no idea where he was or whether he was alive or dead. The mass expulsion of Palestinians by Zionist paramilitaries was in full swing with tens of thousands already driven from their homes and terror and chaos spreading through the country. My mother, convinced that my father had been killed, held a funeral for him. My world was shattered. After three weeks, my father was suddenly released without, expl without explanation. When he returned home, he learned that Zionist fighters were approaching our town. Fearing for our safety, he decided to flee with us to Nazareth, where he hoped to find temporary refuge before returning back to Limjebin. Six weeks later, the city was attacked. That day, I was in the market with my father. I can still vividly recall bullets landing between my feet. My father decided to move once more, and we set out on foot to the north on a nearly 50-mile journey to Lebanon alone. I was separated from my mother and siblings for weeks, and all that I really wanted during that time was to hug my mother, to play with my siblings and cousins, and to be at home. With the passage of time, we realized that the world was not going to liberate Palestine and to allow us to go home. So in 1950, my father decided that we would return on our own. Making his way to Jordan, he walked across the border into Israel through the West Bank, arriving back in Nazareth. The rest of us followed shortly thereafter, making the journey on foot as well, except for my eldest sister, who stayed behind in Jordan because she had a young child and feared being killed by Israeli soldiers on the journey, as many, ha as many Palestinians had been who tried to return. Upon returning, we discovered that the roughly 150,000 Palestinians who remained inside what was now Israel were treated as unwelcome foreigners in our very own country. Although we were given citizenship, most of our land was taken from us and we were put under military rule until 1966. My mother and all of us were prosecuted for infiltrating back to our own country and we were ordered deported. We were only given a reprieve and spared a second expulsion as a result of mass protests by Palestinians who feared that Israel planned to expel all those who still remained. But although we were allowed to, to stay, the wounds we suffered were still fresh and painful. El Mjedl's homes had been completely wiped off the map, including mine, leveled and replaced with new ones built for Jewish immigrants. The mosque was destroyed, as was the Muslim cemetery. All that remains today are two churches and a Christian cemetery. Today, a park and a L'Oreal factory stand on the site of my hometown. A sign in the park says that the town was established in 1950, I was born in 1939, by Iranian immigrants. Imagine what it's like to watch helplessly as your home and your most cherished personal possessions are taken by strangers or destroyed and the history of your people and family erased. More than 400 Palestinian towns and villages were systematically destroyed or taken over for use by Jewish Israelis and hundreds of Palestinians were killed in some two dozen massacres that spurred the refugee flight. Yet today, Israel continues to steal Palestinian land, continues to revoke residency rights, and destroy Palestinian homes so that Jewish Israelis can live in their place. For more than 53 years, Palestinians in the occupied territories have lived under oppressive military rule with no rights, while Palestinian citizens of Israel are subject to dozens of laws that discriminate against us. One of these laws prevents us from reuniting with family members who were expelled in 1948, my sister among them. Although she was born, raised, married, and gave birth to her first child in Limjedin, Israel has refused to let her, let her return and rejoin our family. 
As a result, she was, lived out her days in Jordan, where she passed away in 2002, still longing to return home. My cousins remain scattered throughout the world. The Nakba wasn't just a historical event. It continued unabated for 72 years. Every time I leave Nazareth, I pass the town where I grew up. Although I can still see it, and I still have the deeds to more than 100 acres of land, I cannot return and live there. I have one grandchild, a precious six-year-old boy who I love more than anything else in the world. I dream of a day when he can live in freedom and equality in my homeland, and I pray that he does not have to endure the same suffering that we've gone through as a result of the racist apartheid regime that Israel has established in our land. But I don't just pray for it. I know it will happen. Thank you.